So we're going to try to understand the word redox. Well, the word, no, we're going to really be focused on, on the word oxidation and reduction. A redox reaction is just a reaction in which oxidation and reduction happen at the same time, but that's usually it's quite often the case, to be honest. So um, let's start talking about, let's think about oxidation uh, and use and, and think about it in terms of how we originally learned about it. For example, magnesium reacts with oxygen to produce magnesium oxide. Now, by the way, you, you'll need to be able to come up with a formula for magnesium oxide. Um, magnesium is in group two, so we know it form a plus two ion. Oxygen is in group six, so it form a two minus ion. So the formula is going to be just MTO because behind the scenes, this ionic formula is in fact Mg2 plus um, and O2 minus. So you can see these two, they cancel out. Um, in terms of the charge, they cancel out. In terms of the electron transfer, they also cancel out. The magnesium is, gained, is given up two electrons, and these, this one needs only two electrons. So, um, so that's fine. So this is the this is the correct formula, and but it's not balanced, of course. So balancing it, there we go. Um, now. So oxidation, the magnesium has reacted with oxygen to produce magnesium oxide. That's how we originally think about what oxidation is. Um, however, the new definition of oxidation that we're going to be learning about is characterized, characterized by this way of remembering it, oil rig. Um, and um, it stands for oxidation is loss and reduction is gain. Now, <clears throat> loss of what? Gain of what? Well, it is of, of electrons. So we'll try to understand how, how that happens. Uh, the way that we're going to do that is by, we're going to look at this um, formula, this whole formula here, and we're going to be looking at uh, we're going to break it up into the individual elements. So actually what we're going to do is going to produce half equations. A half equation is where we take we uh, take the, we look at the equation and we look just look at one element within the equation and see how that has changed its ionic nature, I suppose its charge. So if we look at magnesium first, um, so the magnesium, we're not interested in the oxygen. If we look at the magnesium oxide, it's become Mg2+. Um, and in doing so, it gave up two electrons. So we write the two electrons separately, like that. So that would be my first half equation from this, uh, this reaction. Now, as it says, oxidation is loss of electrons. And the magnesium, as we can see from this half equation, has lost two electrons. So we can say the magnesium has been oxidized. We knew that already from the old definition. But I'm just showing you how the old definition and the new definition matches up. On, on a, uh, well, whenever the, by the old definition something has been oxidized, also by the new definition it's been oxidized. But you can actually oxidize something even when oxygen isn't even involved. So... Strangely enough, we can talk about whether or not the oxygen has been oxidized or the opposite of oxidation, which is reduced. So we look at the oxygen and we can see we've got, uh, starting off with an oxygen molecule, and it, in fact, it collects these electrons here. In fact, it doesn't, it collects more than that. It needs to collect four electrons which is why in the full equation we have to have two magnesiums because it needs to gain four electrons. Um, and that then these electrons and that oxygen molecule combine together to form two oxide ions. And so the oxygen has actually gained electrons here. In the first case, the magnesium lost its electrons, but the oxidation has gained it to form the oxide ion or two oxide ions. So reduction is gain of electrons. So the oxygen has been reduced. So 
so really, so we could say that this is a redox reaction because reduction and oxidation are occurring at the same time. So let's look at some of the examples we've got up here. Um, okay, ah, yeah, so they haven't. Uh, okay. Okay, so what they're doing, they're jumping to the next stage, which I'll look at in a moment. What I did is I showed um, I showed uh, the half equations for this, these reactions. And here are some half equations right here. Um, we have here some half equations and some ionic equations. And this is, I was recently teaching this to somebody, it's... Um, it's very difficult for a lot of people to understand the difference between a half equation and a and a, uh, ionic equation. So let's see if we can identify some of the differences. The two, the um, the below bit that's the the equation we have below. That's the um, half equation. So what do we see about the half equations? Well, we have electrons in the equation, and also each each equation only contains one element. So you've got magnesium in the first one. Just the story of magnesium, what's happened to the magnesium in this reaction. And the second one, what's happened to the copper in this reaction. So, Which is why we have to have the electrons in the equation. So this is the half equation. Now if we look at the um, ionic equation, uh, as it says here, it's a balanced equation that can be written in terms of the ions involved. Now... Let's see if, okay, ah, yes. So this is the, if I rewrite the full equation here, the way it, it would normally be written, I'll write that above. So it's the, as it says, it's the displacement of magnesium, well, it's a reaction with magnesium and copper sulfate. The magnesium displaces the copper sulfate, but it's been written a bit strangely. So essentially we've got a magnesium, which yes, will be um, in a solid form. And that's going to react with uh, copper sulfate, SuCuSO4, and that's dissolved in water. Um, uh, so it's going to displace it, which means you'll end up with um, magnesium sulfate. And that would be then dissolved in water, and you'd have this um, copper um, solid forming as a precipitate. Um, so, okay, so so this is what the full equation looks like normally, but what they've done is they've taken the ionic compounds and they've separate, separated them into ions and actually dis set that displayed all that out. So we've got the magnesium, which isn't an ion, so it's been written just as it is, and then they've got the copper ion, which is taken from the copper sulfate, and we've got the sulfate ion, which is taken from the copper sulfate. And then they're both given the aqueous state symbol because both of those ions have, are dissolved in the water and they're moving around freely. This is why we dissolve the ionic compound in the water to allow the ions to move. <clears throat> so it's related to, to electrolysis, which I'll look at after. So once that happens, the uh, as we know, the magnesium displaces the copper. And so... Essentially, uh, we can see that the magnesium is going to take, is going to give the copper ion uh, electrons, in fact, and then it will be falling, then the magnesium ion will fall into solution. And if, if we evaporate it off the water, then the magne you'd get magnesium sulfate uh, crystals. Um, so, so on the other side, after the arrow, we've got a magnesium ion and we've got the sulfate ion still and the copper. Now, this is actually not an ionic um, equation because what we do in ionic equations is <clears throat> we, we only involve the ions that have changed in some sense, the ions that, um, yeah, that, well, yeah, that have changed. So if we look at the magnesium first, the magnesium changed from magnesium solid, so a standard magnesium atom, to a magnesium ion. Okay, so we include that. We include that in our equation. If we look at the copper, the copper started as a copper ion and then became standard copper neutral atoms. But the sulfate, the sulfate um, ion just stayed as a sulfate ion 
And so we don't actually include that in the final equation. We cancel that out a little bit like maths. Some of chemistry, chemical, uh, yeah, chemistry uh, equations in chemistry can be thought of as a mathematical equation, but be careful not to be careful to do that because it's doesn't as many times and that does not work. But in here, what we're, we're simply saying this is there before and it's also there afterwards, so we don't bother writing it in the equation. Um, so, so that is why this is an ionic equation. So, in other words, again, ionic equations we only, we contain. So it includes, and let me just highlight the right. Why does it say ionic equations? Uh, the words, okay, displacement reactions can be analyzed in terms of redox reactions by studying the transfer of electrons. Okay, this is an ionic equation, but I'm trying to work out where it actually says this is an ionic equation. Um, oh, the okay, this equation is an example of a balance. Okay, not written, not this laid out the nicest way. When they say this equation, they mean the above equation, and then underneath that, the um, half equation underneath that. So that is the uh, ionic equation there. Well, specifically this one here. So <clears throat> the ionic equation um, includes oops, includes um, all ions that change. Okay, they don't need to include include the electrons because the electrons are moving from one ion to another. So the electrons are moved from the magnesium to the copper. And you can see that in the half equations. So the half equations contain just one element, um, uh, one element, and we're looking at how the electrons are transferred. Oh, well, are, are, are they are they given up, or are they are they um, are they being added? Are they losing the electrons? Or are they are they um, gaining the electrons? <clears throat> now, from the half equations, we can actually see um, which ones being oxidized and which ones have been reduced. So we can see the magnesium um, had to magnesium lost electrons, so the magnesium has been oxidized, whereas the copper uh, gained electrons, so the copper has been uh, reduced. So that's the that's mostly what we need to understand about. I mean, maybe just have, let's have a look at this example, perhaps. Uh, in fact, um, even though we can actually see the answer, I'm going to try to avert your eyes. Right, okay. So we'll just pause the video and we'll have a go at this one now. So basically, we've got zinc displacing copper from solution of zinc uh, copper sulfate. It's going to be very similar to the last one. Um, what, we're going to, what we want to do is come up with a full equation, uh, an ionic equation, and some half equations. Okay, and then from that, we're going to then conclude which one has been oxidized and which one's been reduced. I will also then talk about how you can answer that last question pretty much immediately without doing the rest of it, but that's what we're going to do. So once again, ionic full equation, half equation, and uh, sorry, full equation, ionic equation, half equations, and then which one's been oxidized, which one's been reduced, okay? Okay, so this is the full equation. We've got zinc as a solid, is reacting with copper sulfate, which is an aqueous, solu an aqueous solution, and it's going to displace it. Therefore, we're going to get zinc sulfate, <clears throat> which is now an aqueous solution, and the copper, which is a solid. So now we're going to try to have a go at the ionic equation, which is um, going to se separate any ionic compound there into its different ions. And we're going to see what's there before ions, what's there before the equation, and what's there after the equation including ions as well as just elements, okay? Right, okay, so here we have the ionic equation. So the zinc is just zinc. Copper sulfate has been separated into its two ions that make up copper sulfate. And over on the other side, the zinc sulfate has been separated into its two ions that make up zinc sulfate. And then we've got copper um, on its own there. Now, why do let's for a moment try to understand why do we write that as it's as separate? Um, so 
let's uh it's a bit easier to understand with slightly easier ionic compounds so let's for example imagine nacl so if i dissolved um if i dissolved uh, sodium chloride in water what it would what would happen well um let's draw a diagram to remind ourselves about this if we say that that um this this is our sodium ion so co sodium chloride is an ionic compound right um so what we'll do is we'll make we'll draw we'll draw out how the sodium chloride is arranged it's made out of a sodium ion and a chloride ion okay and they they generally speaking they would form a lattice Oh, don't know what happened there. Um, so let's just draw out that lattice. Okay, so this is just in two dimensions, but of course, in reality, you get other layers which would go on the top like that. I'm not quite sure how they would arrange themselves, but maybe like that. I'm not sure. <laughs> anyway. Um, maybe just keep it in two dimensions just for the moment. Uh, so we have this lattice structure. Now, if we dissolve that in water, then the ions are free are, are free then to uh, to move whoops um, to move around. Uh, so we learn about this when we learn about electrolysis. Um, but they're flowing around. There's also water molecules in here as well. And if, when we look at electrolysis, we'll We'll see how it becomes more complicated when you involve water. But in general, though, the point is now, when now that sodium chloride has been dissolved in water, it's um, it's separated into its it's in two two ions. So when we write sodium chloride with an aqueous solution, it's essentially it it means that what what's actually happened is we've got a sodium ion which is Na plus. And a chloride ion, which is Cl minus, and of course, we each one of these would have those state symbols. So when we write um, an ionic equation, we're simply <clears throat> kind of giving more information behind the scenes. We're saying, well, that's what part of what we're doing. But rather than just saying CuSO4, we're saying that actually it's the copper ion on the sulfate ion because this is what happens when you get an ionic compound and you dissolve it in water. So we are writing out those ionic, uh, ionic um, we're writing out those ionic um, formulae. The, the, we're writing out what the ions are. Now, <clears throat> however, this is not the complete, this is not the finalized ionic equation because we only want, in an ionic equation, we only want to include the elements that have changed their ionic status. In other words, their charge. Okay. So if we look at those, we've got on the left hand, we've got three different elements, well, th three different uh, things. We've got zinc, we've got sulfate, and we've got copper. Now we're going to look to see if any of those have, which ones of those have changed and whether or not any of them have not changed. The ones that haven't changed, we don't need to include them in the final um, ionic equation. Right, so looking at these three different substances, these three different things that are involved in the uh, equation, we can see that actually the sulfate ion, just like the last example, didn't change. So we don't include that in our final equation. We would write this out as we see it, but without the sulfate ion. So <clears throat> finally, not finally, we've got two more things we need to do. <clears throat> we need to do the two half equations, and then we're going to decide which one's been oxidized and which one's been reduced. Okay, so the half equations, remember, they are for each element, but only the elements that have, that have changed. So we look at the half equation for zinc and the half equation for copper. Okay. Okay, so... So we've got so basically to do the half equations, part of it is easy. We just look at the one of the elements like zinc, and we again we we must include the state symbols. So oh, okay. 
So we've got zinc and it become and it goes to zinc and on zinc um, two plus an aqueous solution. Right, so now we've got to include the electrons and a lot of people struggle. Do I put them on the left? Do I put them on the right? We've got to think how did the zinc become zinc two plus? Well, how does something become positive? It's by taking away the electrons. So if we are taking away the electrons, do we write the electrons on the left or do we write it on the right? Well, first of all, uh, the easiest way to try to answer that question is if I wrote it on the left, clearly that is giving electrons to it. So it can't be the left. So by process of elimination, it must be the right. Well, let's try to understand why it's the right at another level. And that is that this is not, we meant, I mentioned earlier on in the video that there are some similarities between um, chemical equations and maths, but there, this is a good example of when it doesn't quite work. So another thing that people do is they do take, they write take away electrons on the left, which is definitely not right. What we do in a chemical equation is we write down what is there before, and then we write what is there after. So before there is just zinc, there is a zinc atom. Afterwards, there is a zinc ion and there are two electrons. The, where did these two electrons come from? They came from the zinc atom. So it shows that this equation is showing me that the zinc has been separated into zinc ion and two electrons. So in that sense, we can clearly see the electrons have been separated from the zinc because it was they were combined within it beforehand and now they are separate from it afterwards okay so um so we can actually start to answer our last question from here we could ask answer whether or not it's been oxidized or reduced okay yeah so um so we've, we did the zinc and we can see it's being oxidized because it lost oxidation is loss of electrons the copper ion has been reduced because it's gained electrons and then we show that it's gained electrons by saying that beforehand they were separate and now they're together so let me write that in a note then uh, okay here we go and let's summarize that i will just pause the video while i write that